All right, as you remember, we need to look for totals from our statement. Okay, we need to look at totals that we can get from the wording of the problem. Okay, and then we need to write an equation based off of that total. And then we also need to figure out what the purpose of the problem is, look for the purpose statement, okay, or look for the um, question to lead us to what variables we need to have. So here we go. Um, is there a total value somewhere in here? We'll just pull out the totals. Veronica has been saving dimes and quarters. She has 94 coins in all. That's a total, isn't it? So we have a 94 as one of the totals. And that is total coins. Right? A second total that we have, based on what she said, was $19.30. And that represents the total dollars. Correct? It's the total dollars. So we're going to get wind up getting two equations. We're going to get one equation that talks about the total amount of coins. And we're going to get a second equation that's going to talk about the total number of dollars we get from those coins. Okay? If we look at our question, um, our purpose statement, it says how many dimes and how many quarters does she have? Um, that, what two variables come from that purpose statement? We get two variables out of there. What's the purpose of the problem? From that purpose statement, it says how many dimes and quarters does she have? So we need to figure out two things. We need to figure out the number of dimes and the number of quarters. Okay. We have a total of 94, which makes up the total amount of coins. So what two things make up the total amount of coins then? We add up the amount of dimes plus the amount of quarters. It's going to give us the total amount of coins. Make sense? The next statement talks about the amount of dollars that we have. How do we figure out the total amount of dollars that we have? It's broken up in two, two amounts. The amount of dollars we get from quarters and the amount of dollars we get from dimes. Dimes are 10 cents, right? Dimes are 10 cents, which is how many dollars? 0.10 dollars. So when we write our statement for the total amount of dollars, we can't use 10. We have to use 0.10 for dimes. And then for quarters, we have to use 0.25 because that question, that statement that we're making, that math statement, which is also like a statement in English, it's a full sentence, but that math statement talks about the total amount of dollars. So everything about that needs to talk about the total amount of dollars. So the value of a dime needs to be written in terms of dollars, not in terms of cents. All that? From there, we solve the system of two equations and two variables. I'm going to rewrite it down here so that we have um, so that we have clear access or plenty of space. <clears throat> the easiest way to solve this, I think, is through elimination. We just need the same variable, same number, different signs. And I would prefer to multiply the top one to get the Ds the same number. What times 1 gives us 0 0.10? 0 0.10 times the 1 is going to give us 0.10 again. So it's going to be then the same number. But different signs, so we make it a negative. So we distribute that. And it's minus 0.25, 0.10q, my bad, equals negative 9.4. And then we rewrite the second one. It's 0.10d plus 0.25q equals 19.30. And then we can add those two equations. These two guys are going to drop out. This becomes 1 or 0.15q equals um, 9.9 positive and then divide by 0.5 and you get what number 66 so we get 66 quarters how do we find the, find the amount of dimes then we take that number and we put it back into one of the originals and we solve it for D so we get D equals 
whatever that is. 28. Let's look at the next problem. Now, some of you guys might be able to say that you can do number two without showing any of the math work. And that is awesome if you can figure that out based without doing any of the systems of equations. That's great. And that's really neat. Okay. And that's a good skill to have. Okay. You, you do need to know that when I'm grading this, and I'll give you a reason for it. When I'm grading this section, this is going to be worth one point writing the variables, defining the variables. Each equation that you write is going to be worth one point, so that's, a total, that's two more points for a total of three. The work to solve the system based off of those equations is going to be worth three points, and your final answer is going to be worth one point. So out of this whole seven-point question, you get one point if you can solve this without showing any of your work. You guys understand that? And the reason why that's the case is because, first, you get one point for solving it, and that's great if you can do it by solving in your head. And that's an awesome skill to have. However, I also, we also need you to have the skill of modeling real-life situations with mathematics or with some symbols and equations and things like that. Okay? So you have to show the work. You have to show the equations in order to do that. Now, the reason why I want you to do that is because you might be given a situation one day in your life in the future where you're working for a company and they ask you a question similar to this. Okay? Not directly related to this, but similar where you have to like write some formulas in what's called Microsoft Excel to calculate these answers and you want to just be able to just change one value and to it to calculate the the answers completely. Um, so, like, if that wasn't 30, if that was 2.5 trillion, okay, you're going to want to be able to recalculate it pretty quickly. Okay, and in order to do that, you've got to be able to kind of write equations and create variables based on wording and stuff like that. So, that's kind of, that's kind of the reason why I want you to write the equations and why we need you to step out from just kind of like a middle school ability level of problem solving this, guessing, and checking which is a good skill, it's not a bad skill, and move into writing it abstractly and modeling it mathematically so that you can do it for all cases, for all situations, even if this number changes. Okay, so is there a total value in this problem, in number two? No wording? The sum of two numbers is 30. A sum is a total, isn't it? So we've got a number 30. That's our total. There is not another total represented in this problem. There's just another statement relating the two things, which is the second statement. So let's just skip that next equation part, and let's go right to the purpose statement of the problem, or the question, which says, what are the two numbers? That gives us our variables. So what are our two vari what should we write as our two variables? We could just say x is the first number, right? And we can just say y is the second number. Okay, or x is the one number and y is the other number. So if the sum of the two numbers is 30, we just add those two things together. The first number plus the second number. Then if one number is two more than the other number, one number is two more than the other number. 2 more is 2 plus. Yes? You can either have that, or you could have y equals 2 plus x. One of those two. Okay. But those are the two equations. One of those two. Because the number, the x and y are kind of interchangeable at this point, because they're pretty generic. There's no units associated. It's just a number and another number. Um, but if you set it up like this, um, x equals 2y, so that goes in for x if we want to do substitution. It's already set up for substitution, so that's actually the easiest way to do it. So then you solve it from there. x2 plus 2y equals 30 minus 2, so you get 2y equals 28, so you get y equals 14. So one of the numbers is 14. Since it's y, I'll write it second. The way you get the other number is you take... 
that and you substitute back into the original, one of the originals. Or you could do it in a second, which is actually easier if you put it in a second for there. Um, x equals 2 plus 14. x equals 16. So you get your two numbers, 16 and 14. All right, we've got a third kind of situation that shows up on this problem that we're going to look at. Um, Acme Company uh, rents an, an SUV at a daily rate of $50 plus $75 per model. Speedo Rent Z Company rents it for $24.95 plus $1.25 per mile. At what app mileage will the cost be the same? So from the purpose statement, how do we figure out what the variables are? Let's just start there in this. Point. One of the variables is going to be the amount of miles. That's from our purpose statement. We get that what mileage from that statement. It's the amount of miles, or you could have said the mileage on there. And then the second one is going to be what you said as the cost in dollars because it's all talking about dollars okay then we need to try to figure out two equations from that this one's a little bit different because there's no real representation of a total as a number okay but um, if you notice we're talking about two different companies and things are grouped based on those companies so like we're charged this amount for Acme company so our total that we're talking about is really total cost um, for um, the Acme company rental. Okay, so this first statement is going to come directly from that, and it's going to be the total cost from the Acme company rental. Does that make sense? The total cost is going to be Y. We said that Y was the cost. And for Acme Company, it's going to be $50 plus $0.75 cents per mile or $0.75 cents per X, 4X, $0.75 cents times X equals Y. And then the second one is going to be 24.95 um, plus 1.25 X equals Y. From there, we got to go back to the question and see what we're actually trying to do. At what mileage will the cost be the same? Notice how we wrote them both as y. From this, we can actually set it up as substitution. right? We can take this statement, and we can substitute it into the first one for y, because that's what it equals. And that's actually what talks when the costs are the same. Because each one of these equations, the 50 plus 75x, that represents the cost for Acme. The 24.95 um, plus 1.25, uh, that's the cost for um, the Speedo company. And if we can write tho that those two are equivalent or equal, and then we solve it for x, we can answer our question. Does that make sense? Set that up and solve it for x. So we, I'm going to dot, dot, dot that so we can just get on. By the way, it says pounds of peanuts. That's a typo. It's kind of funny. We would say mileage. So we get an answer for x after we solve that equation for x. And that's all we're asked for. OK? All right, pointers, additional pointers to keep in mind while, while doing these problems. Um, look for totals, things that represent totals. Define variables using the question or the problem statement or purpose statement oops purpose statement then write Two equations, okay, based off of the totals, and then solve systems.